Well, the next domino drops. Big news from the NFL. The Arizona Cardinals have fired head coach Cliff Kingsbury. That's been confirmed by our lead NFL insider, Jonathan Jones. We're going to be talking to Josina Anderson about that one soon. Kingsbury, he's gone after the Cards went 4-13 and this season and 28-37-1 over four seasons in Arizona. This move also comes nine months after Kingsbury signed an extension through 2027. So here's all the NFL coaches that have been fired so far this season. That list includes Lovey Smith, who led the first team eliminated from the postseason, the Houston Texans. That was hours after beating the Colts and falling out of the number one pick in the draft. They fired Smith after just one season. The Indianapolis Colts, they fired Frank Reich. Broncos let go of Nathaniel Hackett. Matt Rule is also out in Carolina. Let's welcome in our Josina Anderson straight off the plane. Now, the Arizona Cardinals fired coach Cliff Kingsbury, who just 10 months ago signed a contract extension through the 2027 season. So, Josina, how did all of this change so much in just one year? Well, a lot has been going on, but if you've been listening to CBS Sports HQ and you're a senior NFL insider, you've been receiving indications about this uh, likely to happen for quite some time. And not just uh, with regards to head coach Cliff Kingsbury, which is what came down from the news today, but also with regards to uh, uh, Steve Kime. And um, even though there was notice about him taking a leave of absence due to health uh, related matters, uh, there is a bevy of circumstances kind of surrounding things that had occurred behind the scenes and uh, in relation to some of the internal matters that they were dealing with that also kind of surrounded uh, his departure as well. What kind of hung that up in the balance was just the uh, unforeseen injury to their quarterback, Kyler Murray, and whether that was going to make owner Michael Bidwell just pause with respect to having too many pieces uh, up in the air at one time. Uh, but, you know, my source has been, you know, consistent in terms of uh, hearing high level things with regards to the thinking from uh, the Cardinals. And I've been relaying that, uh, I would say, over the past week and even have heard from uh, Cardinal sources who had called me right before we came on the air saying that you were correct because they were asking last night. And I think I was talking to our producer about that um, yesterday. But now, obviously, the future is uh, up in the air with regards to getting um not only a new head coach, just kind of looking for the direction of uh, the front office. Obviously, they have a you know a strong in-house candidate with regards to uh, Vance Joseph and also their associate head uh, coach and and other people who are in the building. Uh, but certainly, they will also look outward to just kind of round out their list of of candidates. But certainly, it is an attractive option when you consider uh, that you do have a quarterback who, uh, by all accounts and purposes, should be ready about October-ish um, and just some of the pieces that they have on offense and defense. So we do expect them to change that out with uh, free agency and J.J. Watt and, and certain pieces obviously will be, be leaving. But I do expect uh, Sean Payton to take a look at this opportunity. I'd already mentioned a week, a week and a half ago, uh, that my understanding was that Peyton had a high affinity or has a high affinity for the Cowboys and the uh, Chargers job uh, and also looking at the Cardinals should that become available and that has happened today though I do expect Sean Peyton to keep all of his options uh, available and taking all calls um, as it has already been the case with the Denver Broncos and uh, I'm even certain that he would um, listen to the Houston Texans. You mentioned Sean Payton there just one year after stepping down as a head coach for the New Orleans Saints. Now, Josina, you've got your eyes and your ears. You are in it all. This is now the second straight year a Houston coach has lasted just one season. David Culley let go back in 2021. Now it's Lovey Smith. So where do the Texans go from here? Well, first and foremost, uh, the fact that the Houston Texans have back-to-back uh, -back coaches who are let go after a one-year tenure in and of itself is uh, not only concerning, but just indicative of the upheaval uh, in the organization. Uh, it is also my understanding hearing before we came on the air, and also since I've been hearing over the last week, um, that the owner's uh, evaluations don't just extend to uh, the letting go of Lovey Smith, but will continue from top to bottom in that organization, including front office personnel and other staff personnel as research and background and do 
due diligence on that research and background are still being conducted even at this hour. So that is first and foremost. Um, when you look at uh, the Houston Texans and you evaluate that opportunity from a draft pick perspective, and um, although they are at the bottom tier, uh, they are in a division where some coaches may look at that opportunity and feel that they can compete, uh, let alone that it's just one of 32 jobs that can, you know, be there just by the number of total of teams in the NFL um, in general. So just to say that these opportunities are limited, but with the fact that two uh, coaches have been uh, there just for one year, both of those um, coaches, uh, people of color, um, is certainly something that I know the Fritz Pollard is taking a look at. Uh, is concerning to, um, you know, sources and people within headquarters and uh, Park Avenue. And although any job should go to uh, the best candidate, it is still notable that that has occurred. And the next team we're going to be looking at, the Carolina Panthers. Steve Wilkes making the case as the interim. But, Josina, you reported that Jim Caldwell is interviewing for that head coaching spot. So what's the latest there? So, yes, uh, Jim uh, Caldwell, the former head coach of the Detroit Lions and also the Indianapolis Colts, is uh, doing his interview today, or at least that was the expectation. Uh, like I said, it just came off the uh, plane, so uh, I'm sure that's correct. I haven't heard anything uh, to tell me any different uh, in terms of coming to uh, interview for the head coaching vacancy uh, for the Panthers. As we know, they had their interim there, and Steve Wilkes, who has already stated his case uh, with the job that he did filling in. Uh, after Matt Rule was let go. It is my understanding that Steve Wilkes will be doing his head coach interview uh, this week as well. I know there's a report out that it is Tuesday. I had heard that as well. And, um, and so Jim Caldwell comes in there with a bevy of experience. If you look back at his tenure in Detroit, uh, Jim Caldwell never had any less than seven wins with that organization, no less than seven wins. And in the four years that he was there, he made two trips to the playoffs. And then when you look at his tenure with the Indianapolis Colts, that also included a trip to the Super Bowl. So we're looking at credentials that a lot of people would wish that they have that call what already possesses. And yes, during that time has not been able to get back into the league. Uh, one of the things that has uh, been occurring behind the scenes as communications happen between representatives and the league office here in New York is that, you know, they're always kind of just going back and forth with information. Uh, one of the things that I know is one of the directives from uh, Park Avenue is to sort of beseech these uh, organizations and these clubs to really take another look at experience. When you look at the coaching carousel and what happened last year, there were a lot of coaches who got opportunities uh, who don't necessarily have um, the traditional amount of experience, though some of them turned out to be uh, very successful, especially when you're looking at the case of Nick Sirianni, uh, opposite of what happened with Nathaniel Hackett. Uh, but nonetheless, it still underlines that there are a lot of head coaches out there uh, who have not been able to return the league or also do have a lot of experience who are worth uh, consideration. Yes, yeah, always a tough time to be an NFL head coach. You're trying to get into a new position, getting fired from an old position. Stuff at the end of the season. The chopping block definitely doesn't hold back. Josina, thank you so much. We always appreciate all your insight, the fact that you know everything that's going on throughout the league. Now, after this weekend's action, you got to be sure to tune in to Inside the NFL. It is streaming exclusively on Paramount+. Plus. A brand new episode drops each and every Tuesday evening at 9.30 p.m. Eastern during the NFL season. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.